you would turn to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and I'm going to read 1, 2, and 3, and then 13, and uh, we'll read them. And it's, there's a lot of different ways or a lot of different directions you can go with this subject I got on my heart this morning, and it's really so big that it's hard to even try to condense it down to to get a, a lesson from it, but there's so many different ways you can go with it. But hopefully we'll see in just a minute that what I am going to try to teach about is very, very important in our lives and and we need to uh, take heed and know, take, take heed and, and, and really contemplate on the picture I'm trying to show you this morning. The first Corinthians chapter 13 Start with verse 1, it says, this is whenever the Corinthian church was having a lot of trouble. Uh, they, had, they had had all kinds of troubles if you read, read the Corinthians. And he, he meant these, these words were written in the 13th chapter. Verse 1, it starts, it says, Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels that have not what? Charity. Charity. I become a sounding brass and a tinkling tender. And though I have a gift of prophecy and understand mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, I'm nothing. So charity is pretty important, isn't it? The love, what did you say about Love and action? That's what charity Listen to verse 13 now. It says, And now about a faith, hope, and charity. Faith, hope, and charity. These three, but the greatest of all these, of, of these, is charity. So charity, or love and action, is very, very important. We need to show more love one to another. The Bible teaches, I'm getting ahead of myself probably, but the Bible does teach you in Hebrews 13, 1, let brotherly love continue. So love is important. Isn't it? There are different kinds, <clears throat> there are different kinds of, of love. Can you name any of them? And when I say a different kinds, they each one, like a rose, is, is, means it, it's totally different from all the others that I'm talking about. You got a gaffa or a gaffa? I don't know which way you say it. A gaffa, a gaffa, a rollus, filio, filio. So these are different kinds of love that you can have. <clears throat> I want you to look at the love of God and look at that, the love of God, what God has done for us, and He loves us. The only reason we love Him is because He first loved us. And God is love. The Bible teaches in 1 John 4, I believe it is, 19 or 13 through there anyway, it says, God is love. So, I want us to look at these different kinds of love, and then I want to look at Love for others, and and the, and the love for God itself. Are we sinners by nature? We are. Aren't we? Well, David, if you would read uh, Romans five and eight, and think about that we're we're unlovable people, basically. Well, not, For God commanded his love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Okay, God, I think in 5 8 says, But God commended his love toward us while we were sinners, ye sinners. Christ died for us. Now, the love of God, just think about the love of God. We were sinners. Said, we're no good. We all fall short. We're sorry. We're we're despiteful people. Depraved. Huh. Depraved. 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 
of man because of that of the need. We have no love, but God is love, and, and the love of God first, and then love for God. But the love of God, what did Jesus do for us? Show his love. Brother Chris? He took all of our sin upon him. Okay. All our sins. We were born in sin and we die in sin. But it's talking about in an eternal sense. Jesus Christ came and he loved us so much he forgave us for all the... What did they do to Jesus? In Matthew 26 and 27 is pretty well described. And in Isaiah 53. Isaiah, I'd say, was 53 be the one of the best. What are some of the things that they've done to Jesus because he had a love for his people? They spit on him? They crucified him. They crucified him. Mocked him. Mocked him. When somebody would spit in your face and mock you and beat you with a cattail, they call it, and, and and he still had a great love for us. All those that he chose before the foundation of the world, the elect God, people elect of God, Jesus Christ bore the sins of us or me. He, and so that's the love of God. We were we were quickened. We were dead in trespassing and sin. The natural man can't receive the things of the Spirit of God. But the love of God, he, it says in Ephesians 2, 4, and 5, But God who is rich in what? Mercy for his great love. Not just love, but great love. For his rich in mercy for his great love, where he loved us, even when we were in sin. He has quickened us together in Christ Jesus. By grace are you saved. What is grace? We found out what charity is. Unmerited. Unmerited, undeserved love of God. Unmerited love of God. That's what grace is. Grace is also that charity. And it, it, it pretty well tells us that Nothing is better than charity. All we have faith, hope, and all charity, but the greatest is love or charity. Love in action. In First John chapter three, verse one, here again it tells us of the love of God. It says it says, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. We be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth not, us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now we are the sons of God. Why do we love God? I know I answered that question long ago, because he first loved us. You know, we think about the love of God. Now we, we need to think about the love for God. How do we... Can our, can our love back to code Matthew over 24 teaches that, uh, that that our love can wax cold. We can have love, but then again, we can turn it off right quick. And, and just, that means wax cold means your, your light's going back. The, the heat won't do the candle anymore. They use that illustration. We love God. We need to have love for God. For God. Hebrews 13, I'm going to mention about we need to let brotherly love continue throughout. As we born born of the Spirit and have the love of God, Galatians 5, 22, there, once you're quickened and made alive in Christ, God gives you the Spirit. He get, he's got nine parts of the fruit of the Spirit over in Galatians 5, 22. And, and prior to that, it's telling about all these bad things that man does, adulterers and fornicators and liars, and they can't enter the kingdom of God, which is peace and joy, righteousness of the Holy Spirit. They can't have that. But he starts off with, then this is what he gives us. The very first one in Galatians 5.22 is those nine parts. Number one would be love. Love. Love, patience, long suffering, meekness, kindness, all that. But the number one first one was love. That's what Corinthians, over Corinthians 13 says, 
that it's above all the rest. It's the great love. The great love. So we have the love of God, and now we have the love for God. <coughs> in 1 John 3, 18, Brother David, start with uh, well, more about the, 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 the. We're to show our love by helping others now. We got the love of God and the love for God. Now are we to love others? Once God has in you, quickened you and then planted that love in your heart and in your soul and in your mind, we to have love for others. Who's somebody in the Bible that had a great love once he was had the love of God and became one of the sons of God? Who comes to your mind that had a great love for somebody? About Joseph had a great love for his brothers. Absolutely. He forgave his brothers, did he? Now they would, what was this Christie explained about the seven years and so forth? That's the yeah. end. Well, I mean, his brothers were very cruel to him and threw him in a pit and sold him off as a slave and they didn't care what happened to him. All right, he went from a pit, his brothers seen a caravan coming with each of the lights, I think. It was. Mm -hmm. And they said, let's, send, uh, let's kill him first. They were going to kill Joseph. Because they hated him from way back. Even when he had the coat of many colors. They, he, he was hated by his brothers. So they took him out there. And he, he come to them and, and they said, let's kill him. Let's get rid of him. Was they showing a lot of love there? No, for the brother? <laughs> so they threw him in a pit. And then he come along, the Ishmaelites come along and bought him, and they went to the palace. And he went from the pit to the palace. He was, and then he wound up in prison again. But all that time, God was with Joseph, it said. And they were seven years, there was going to be a famine in the land. And his brothers, I forget all the whole story about it, but the main thing is that they had to depend on to go to him because of the food he had, the wheat, the corn, and so forth. And they went, and they didn't, they didn't recognize that Joseph, their brother. But he helped them out. He had a great love even for them. Were they enemies to him? What does the Bible say in Matthew 5, 43 and 44? Love your enemies. Love, love them. Love your enemies. Bless them that persecute you and say all evil men are against you. So there's that brother that they love is, and the natural brother, but he helped it. And you know what he said? He said, I forgive you. He forgave them for doing what they did. So you have the love of God, the love for God, and now we have the love for others, and that would be a good example. Anybody else got one? Who comes to your mind, they will not say you love again. Samaritan? Yeah, that was good answer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, I can tell in the eyes, you're trying to say Samaritan. <laughs> the good Samaritan was the enemy. To the Jews. And we all know that they were, I mean, you can't get around in the Bible without mentioning the Good Samaritan, talking about the enemies of God's people. And if, if, if you just picture yourself, I'm the one that's beat up. I can't really visualize all the pain they went through. But I'm the Good Samaritan, I mean, I'm the I'm a victim. And you beat me up, and it says that you're half dead. I don't know how you get half dead either. You fix me go or ain't fix me go, one or the other. But he, the Bible said he was half dead. He was beat up and half dead. And the priest comes along and sees that, sees me out there. I'm beat up. I ain't going to say blood. But he was, he did it good. He was beat up. I mean, put it back. Could have died. But the mercy and grace and love 
of God was implanted in some that good Samaritan. But the priest went by and saw him and walked on the door. And then he came up around. I don't know that part of that. How many times do we do that? We see somebody in need or, or something and pass on by. And then the Levite, a religious type person, come along. He did the same thing. He just did pay in mind. And then the Samaritan come along and he helped the man out. Not to show him love to his enemy. Love your enemy. Hard to do. So the Samaritan went over there and helped him get back on his feet. He said if he needs anything else later, I'll help you again. That's charity. That's charity. That's love in that commitment. David, David loved King Saul. He didn't know King Saul was his enemy. He was trying to kill him. That's right. He loved him because of God's anointing. It's told over in Samuel what David's talking about is he, Brother Billy mentioned, I think Billy Wings and that mentioned about the javelin. Saul, Saul was pretty good at that with that javelin, evidently. And he was in a cave, and at one point he had. He actually threw that javelin at David, and David was spared by God. But eventually, they were in a cave to show the love of a brother, even though he's your enemy, as, as you say. He actually cut his garment and let him know I was there. And, and David would flee from him at all times like that because he would want to kill David. And David proved to him he still had a great love for him. David could have killed him while he was asleep, but he didn't. He just cut part of his garment off and let him know, I was here and I could have killed you, but I still live. That's a great love. Isn't it? That's charity. That's charity in action. Love in action. Well, that's a good example, a good commitment. Anybody else got? Any, any? So we need to have love for others. Ephesians 2, 1 through 4 says, And you have to quicken who were dead in trespasses and sin. Where in the time past you walked according to this world, according to the prince of the power of the spirit, now working in children's disobedience. <clears throat> we didn't get to talk about the great love. Among whom also we have had our conversation in the time past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desire of the flesh and mind, Whereas by nature the children of wrath, even as others, but, but, here's a but. After all that was said, it says, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, where he loved us. Great love. God had great love for me, for me. The Bible tells us if you see somebody in need of me and help, and I know several in this church that does a lot of work. Won't mention their names, but they secretly do. Uh, you, you look around and you see people doing some things here that, that they don't want nobody to know about. But they do it because they love the church and they love God and they love His people. And if you see somebody that's in need or in trouble, the Bible tells us over in Galatians 6 too that we need to bear one another's burdens. Don't we? If I need help, or you need help, we need to bear one another. That's showing love one for another. That's brotherly love. Uh, it's, it's, all right, who else? He yeah, had the love of God, the love for God, now the love for others. Give me one more example of somebody that anybody Janet came up? Paul Saul. Paul Saul. Saul Paul. Yes. Well, I have. Testament after he was converted from the era of his way. I wouldn't say he was I, I say converted. He was converted to the to the era of his way. 
First, turn to uh, these two scriptures here. Let's think, let's think about it. Uh, turn to John, St. John, 13th chapter, and verse 35. Uh, Daniel, you want to read that? Verse 35. Yeah, I think, I think I'm right. St. John, chapter 13, verse 35. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. If you have love one to another. All right. If you have love one to the other, you can be a disciple of when you are a disciple of Christ. What is a disciple? Learner. Learner, follower. Okay. If you have love, okay, that's in St. John chapter 13, 35. Okay. Turn to 1 John chapter 3. Christy, you read it? No, sir. Turn, I think it's First John chapter three verses thirteen and fourteen, especially fourteen. Yeah, I think that's First John. Verse John three. What was the name? Thirteen and fourteen. I think. Okay. Marvel not, my brethren. If the world hate me, we know that we have passed from death into life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brethren abideth in death. Who is a, whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Can you have can you be a murderer and and never kill somebody physically? You if you hate your brother, it says you don't have the love of the father in you. Yeah. Sometimes I don't like the scripture and think it quotes to you because it don't fit my natural way. But in Revelation 3.19, Jesus said, and he says, uh, as many as I what, love, as many, says Revelation 3.19, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. I don't like chastening. You? But, but is it good for you? Yes, it is. Chastisement, if we were not chastened by God, we would be in a bad situation. We, we love our children, our natural children, and we spank them or rebuke them and chasten them to get them to learn the good way, the right way. If you don't, if you don't love them enough to spank them and, and, and chastise them, then they will go astray. We, I think we all agree with that. Go ahead. Things, things that we learn in obedience to our parents bleeds right over into our service to God. If our parents never disciplined us, then when we read scriptures like this, it makes no sense to us. No. Uh, because we didn't learn that our parents loved us and they disciplined us to make us walk in the right way. <laughs> then when God disciplines us, we think, well, God's unfair. Yeah, God's love. Well, He's going to do that. So <laughs> we, we learn from youth. And you know, we fear our parents with a righteous fear. We, <coughs> we, uh, we don't want to whip them. And we learn to fear God because we don't want to whip them from God. But it's necessary. Absolutely. It's necessary. Familiar verse, and, and every one of you know it. And I, I may, may misquote a little bit of that, but over in Romans 8, Paul said he was persuaded or convinced. That's what the word persuaded is. You can't get by with this lesson of love and charity and love of God, and love for God, and love for others, unless you know and realize that God is love. He don't change from day to day. His love does not fluctuate. His, his love does not wax cold. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And when this scripture was written, Paul was very convinced. He had a close relationship with God, especially after the conversion. And he says, I am persuaded that neither death, that's our ultimate right there, death. I'm persuaded that neither death, 
no life, no angel, no principality, no power, things present or things to come to separate you from what? The love of God. God is love. Not going to ever change that. You can't change that. He's love and He's always been love. Now we can love, but we our love can go south quick. Especially if we get offended or something like that. We can get very upset and not have love. One of the loves is agapa, one of the realists, one of the different kinds of love, but it don't matter. We can wax coats on every one of them. So I pray the Lord bless us to see. There's a lot, a lot more you can go to. It's a, a real big subject that it's hard to explain to me, or for me it's hard to explain. But I thank God for the love, the charity that He has given me. And I hope I always can exercise that and say, I need to do something for somebody else. That's love and that. Anybody got anything?